Kogi State Government has asked heads of security agencies in Nigeria to invite Kogi Central Senatorial Candidate of the People's Democratic Party PDP, Mrs. Natasha Akboti Yudwagan, for questioning over alleged terrorism related activities. The government said, despite heavy security interventions by the present administration of Yaya Bello to get rid of uh, terrorism in the state, he was worried that politicians had deliberately continued to groom terrorists in the state as well as import them from neighboring states. There was a statement issued by the Kogi State Commissioner for Information and Communications, Mr. Kinsley Fanwo, where he says that the state government has alleged that Ms. Apoti Duaran had exhibited enough actions to be invited over terrorism related activities, especially with the manner in which the PDP and organizations linked to Mrs. Apoti Duaran had been advocating for the release of an arrested terrorist called Safiu. I'm being joined by the Commissioner for Information and uh, Communications in Kogi State, Mr. Kingsley Fanwo. He joins us virtually from Lokoja. Thank you so much, Mr. Fanwo, for joining us. What are the evidence that are available uh, from that estate uh, raid and what happened at that event? There seems to be a lot of confusion. Give us a position of the government of Kogi State on this matter. Uh, Mr. Fowler, it, it does look like you, you've muted your computer. If you can unmute so that we can hear you. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Shiel. Uh, we, in the early hours of today, we called on security agencies to um, invite some PDP leaders for interrogation, chief among which is um, Barista Natasha akuti uh, so that they come and explain the connection they have with one of the terrorists uh, that was arrested uh, because they've been calling for his release and have been making a lot of uh, noise and allegations uh, concerning um, a known terrorist uh, that was arrested uh, by the Igbo security agencies. Uh, that is enough evidence to show the world uh, that uh, Natasha Udoyan is, uh, is, is breeding terrorism in the state. Uh, as much as uh, we know, he has she has imported a lot of a lot of terrorists, a lot of militants to come and destabilize the peace of the state. So with this one, for them to come out and identify openly with an arrested terrorist, then I think it's high time security agencies invited her for for questioning. Uh, give us a sense of what exactly is happening because we will get our own side tonight uh, on uh, what has become uh, a very major controversial issue in your state. Now, there are pictures that have emerged of uh, this same Safiu man that uh, is said to have been arrested with some top officials of Kogi state government. Perhaps, let's put up uh, those pictures, uh, linking and saying, look, at what point uh, did Natasha Akoti uh, ask this link? Is this man also not linked with officials in Kogi State? I'm very sure you've seen some of these pictures. So I guess that's the man in question on the, uh, the left side of your screen. And that's uh, another part of him uh, right there on the screen. So will you react to that, Mr. Fanwu? Uh, thank you very much. I, I, I'm not denying. Uh, these pictures uh, that you are showing me. And uh, you know the way these people uh, operate. At times, uh, they operate uh, under the cover of not being known by the people uh, they tend to get close to. So they, get to, they tend to get close to these people to garner a lot of information to see how they could um, uh, affect the security architecture of, of the place. And uh, we, we cannot deny that. But the fact that he has been found out uh, and at the time he was found out, he had already gone back to those people that gave him the contract of terrorism uh, by saying that he uh, is fully with Natasha Oduaya and the rest. Our place is not his place. And as we approach the 2023 general elections, he had decided uh, to fully come out to identify with the people that have given him the contract to come and destabilize the security architecture of the state and understand what this contract is all about. Well, I mean, what is the form of this contract? What contract is, exactly is it? It is a contract of destabilization, a contract of bloodbath that we are witnessing today. Uh, you know, when we came in, 
COVID Central was the dungeon of, of criminality. It was, it was so tough that, you know, they killed tens of people daily when PDP was in power because of some of these people that were recruited uh, to be fomenting trouble. Even some international terrorist organizations, they have their cells in COVID Central. You know, with the activity of the PDP, of Barista Natasha and her cohorts, now COVID Central is gradually drifting back to the yesteryears of bloodbath. I'll give you a particular statistics. The crime rate in Kogi State today, when you put it 100%, 51.2% is coming from Kogi Central alone. This is the data with security agencies in Kogi State. This fellow, uh, this a few uh, a fellow that has been arrested, where is he? Um, I, I, would not want to, I would not want to divulge that. I, I think security agencies uh, would be in the best position uh, to tell us uh, where he is. Uh, on our part as a government, we are monitoring the situation uh, because the fight against terrorism should not be politicized. And we would ensure that we fight totally to rid Kogi of uh, some of these uh, terrorists that are disturbing our peace. Well, let's, uh, I've, I'm since being joined by the person in question that uh, the Kogi State government had asked that the security agency should arrest an easy Kogi Central Senatorial Candidate of the People's Democratic Party, uh, Mrs. Natasha Akutu-Duagan. Thank you so much indeed for joining us Thank tonight. Thank you for having me. Uh, you have been, the government has asked for your arrest and interrogation. Um, do you know the Sefiu man? What is your link with him? Did you give him a contract to destabilize Kogi State? Um, dear Shu, like yourself, I mean, Nigerians, I woke up to that unfortunate news. And um, I have not met the chef human in question. Neither have I contracted with him in any form. And as I'm speaking to you, on until three weeks back, he has been an active member of the APC Kogi State. He has, you see pictures with him hobnobbing with Yaya Bello and the chief of staff and every other person there. He's actually been bidding their deeds. So um, when I saw the video where Shafiu decamped openly, and especially the one which he um, led, he amongst other young men led a, a project calling for the end of uh, violent activities and toggery in Kogi Central leading into the elections. I was like, okay, this is the first of its kind. And it's knowing some faces, I was like, okay, who is this gentleman? I kept on asking questions, who is this, who is this, who is this? It was in that process, I was, they were like, okay, Natasha, some of these gentlemen here, including Shafiu, could have been the ones that actually attacked you at the INEX Peace Pact in Lokoja in 2019. And I was, felt a bit cold. I was like, really? They said yes, that he is actually a stepbrother to the chief of staff who works with the governor, that they actually, the Kogi state governor, granted Shafiu and many others a pardon from the Nigerian prisons in Kujie here. I, am not, I don't know whether he was a convicted criminal, but I know that he was in prison. Have you met this a few? Person? No, I haven't met with the Have you spoken with him? I haven't board? spoken with him. Well, but you were asking for his release. Did you ask for his release? I didn't ask for his release, but as a concerned person, I asked questions about the trade more incident because prior to the trade more incident um, arrest by the Nigerian Navy from Kogi State. So for those who do not understand what the trade more incident yes. was, there was an incident, there was an arrest by the Nigerian Navy at the trade more. From Kogi, led Co by the Kogi State Division of the Nigerian Navy. Give us an understanding of what happened. Okay, here it is. It was, I think, a Tuesday last week. Um, prior to that, I got an information that Yahya Bello had secured a search warrant from the courts to search my house in the village, in uh, my hometown, Ihima, alongside my office, my campaign office, and the houses of some key PDP officials. The whole idea behind the search warrant was to embarrassed to plant ammunitions and explosives and in the presence of the television stations he was going to like you know search and embarrass us and then call for the arrest so the moment we got to uh, wind of that we wrote a petition to the dss and 
to the Nigerian police. You will see it's actually acknowledged before the trade war, but the Abelo didn't know about this. Otherwise, he wouldn't have planned all this sh uh, sham. The trade war is where your office is. No. Tr trade war estate is in Lube, okay. and that's where Shafi was. was. Yes. That's where Shafiu was arrested. So what so, is the link between you, Shafiu, and the trade mall? Yeah, yeah, Bello should explain what this is. I'm just, re I'm only feeding you part of what I see on the news as well. So you have written the petition to the We DHS. wrote the petition because we got to know that Yabelo was going to stage um, a search, plant explosives, and then get us embarrassed as if, oh, they found this is what we're trying to do. Now, let me say this a little bit. A, a bit. In the 2019 elections, I was all, um, I was tagged as unfit to campaign because I was single and all. But now that I got married to a gentleman from Delta State, there has been a campaign that I'm married to a militant who is going to bring a militancy to Kogi State. So that's it. So based on that, Yabelo has carefully been masterminding a plan to find a way of disturbing, of taking me out That's of the election. That's an allegation on the governor of your state. I am saying I mean, this. That this must also come with, well, you're a lawyer. Yes, so you understand I'm the very, ramification yes. of the issues of reformation. Yes, of course. But let me say this now. I have no connections with um, Shafi in person, other than the fact that he decamped to PDP um, last, about three weeks ago. And based on that, Yaya Bello got offended that he was not going to be able or he will not avail himself to disrupt the campaigns as he did in the 2019 election. That's the gentleman's offense. So having roped him into the explosives by using the Nigerian Navy, uh, but on my way here from AIT, I got to, uh, know, I got to know that Shafi is right now with the DSS because the DSS had to call the Nigerian Navy Kogi right. division that they should bring him in. So that being said, I would actually appreciate if um, the DSS actually invites me, but I would want the DSS to invite Yaya Bello as well in the, and uh, in bring Shafiu to the table and Asuku himself, that's the chief of staff, who claimed to have freed the gentleman from prison and supported him through his life. Now, I would also want the DSS to televise the interrogation I don't mind paying for airtime on channels and AIT and TVC and all that. And we'll have it streamed on social media platforms. I would want the interrogation to be free because it's about time that Nigeria government zoomed so into the violence. So you think this is political in nature? It is political and it's political because Yabelo knows that he's failing. He's going to lose. I bet you PDP is going to clear all seats in Kogi State because we are tired of the tactics of Yabelo. All right. Let me allow Mr. Fanwo to react to what uh, Ms. Akoti Yudwangan has said. Um, I, I'd like to touch on a few issues before we go. So let's, let's hit the, the nail on the head quickly. Your reaction to what Ms. Akoti has said. Thank you very much. Um, um, I, I'm glad that um, Mrs. Natasha Yudwangan is, uh, is a lawyer. And you know that what law affords us is the, the ability and the capacity to organize your facts properly. Uh, and I'm very sure he will not want to be a very terrible example of a bad lawyer. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me send out this fact. One, she said that um, uh, Shafiu was an APC member. You know, there are, there are qualifications before you become a member of a party. Shafi is not in our register, either manually or digitally. So what makes, uh, what, what made him a member of the party in the first place? Two, she said she did not know anything about Shafi. Uh, but they wrote a letter to the IG to tell the IG that um, the governor was trying to um, organize the arrest of Shafi at Tradmore Estates. You know, how did she get to know that there was a plan like that if she had no connection with Shafi? And why was the desperation to ensure that they um, halt the arrest of a terrorist? Now, thirdly, she has been alleging that the, the, it was the Navy that um, uh, carried out the operation. The DSS had come out openly to own the operation. So I, I don't know, maybe there are things that uh, she knows that Nigerians don't know about. Yeah, Mr. Afan, I'll allow to, uh, to respond but to she that. Need but she raised an issue which I, uh, I would like you to respond so that she can take all those together. 
is the fact that that Safi was once arrested and was released. On what basis was he released? Okay. Um, let, let me tell you this, uh, Mr. Shell. On Shafiu's arrest and release, I would not want to say anything about that because it bothers on national security right now. So uh, let the security agencies be able to come out uh, to talk about that. And also, um, we will also confer with the Attorney General of the state, who is competent enough uh, to deal with uh, such um, let, let, uh, let me allow Ms. Uh, Uruan to respond to Please, your, is your chance to respond now. Now, the pictures that were shown on slides, the members, the people in there are all members of APC, and they're all members of the government. So invariably, to the layman, when you see a person hobnobbing everywhere with the governor, you can see these pictures, then you just assume there's a presumption of a, a fact that he could be a member of APC. It's not in my prerogative to go into the, his, the word register to ascertain whether he is registered. Then, this is the petition. It was a blank petition. We didn't mention trade more at all. All we wrote here was, you know, like the, the, um, the notification that Yabelo had planned to stage a search and to plant evidence How in the process. How did you get to know this? Oh, come on, we have people. What Yabelo doesn't know or what he knows is that some of the people both commissioners and special advisors and assistants who work with him are actually not in principle with him because they are fed up and tired of his mood of administration. But they are too scared to resign for the safety of their lives. They are too scared. So whenever any plan happens, they call me and say, Natasha, please be careful. This is what he's planning to do. You were a former member I of was the ABC. Yes, by member of his cabinet, actually two people notified me of that. So immediately we got to know that he has gotten the search warrant to go into my home. I didn't even know about the trademark. It was moral. You can read the petition here. I'm going to leave you copies. And I've actually posted it in your, on your page. You are, you, are you worried that um, once you are investigator, because if this man I mean, is said to have joined the PDP yes. and is being linked to you and the government of Kogi State is taking up this matter, are you worried in any manner of what could come out of that? I'm not worried because my hands are clean. I'm not PDP as in the party. I'm a product of PDP. I'm not the only one contesting election. There are actually three senators across the three senatorial district. There are three House of Reps members and there are a number of House of Assembly as Why well. Why is it that the matter is about you? That's the thing because I'm a force to reckon and I believe I'm going to actually nail the coffin on your Bello's political career. It's the end. All this Bello is doing is just the last kicks of a dying horse. So, and like I said, I'm actually very excited and I'm happy and I actually pray that the DSS and the, uh, the Inspector General of the Police and the Naval Headquarters look into this because this particular gentleman from uh, Lieutenant Charles Uchena Akaliezi, who leads the Naval Division in Kogi State, has actually caused a lot right. of mayhem. He's actually the killer for Yaya Bello in Kogi State. He this killed a, a lot of... This is a very strong allegation you are making. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm happy oh that you are, you are a lawyer. But we need, yes. to, we need to close now. Yes. Go Let ahead. me get your 20 seconds. We need 20 seconds uh, uh, apiece to close it. What's your closing uh, uh, thought on the program? 20 seconds, Mr. Afanwo. Again, uh, you know, what, what, she has, what she has said is an attack um, on logic. Uh, we know that um, Natasha Odwayan has hobnobbed with virtually all the big people in politics in Nigeria. Uh, does that make her member a member of all of uh, the political parties where those people belong to? Again, from the conditions that she's reeling out, uh, that if they invite, if they invite right. him today, uh, the governor will have we're, to be We're there. out of time. Uh, Let me give you your wait. 20 seconds, Ms. Akwoti. 20 seconds, because we are totally out of time. Of course. I'm calling on the president and all of Nigeria and all the security agencies to please call Yahya Bello to order. All right. We do not have to kill ourselves for power. All right. We should allow That's how we live it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Akwoti and Mr. Fanwo, we're totally out of time. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.